Hi, Mark. Today, I'm so super excited to have with us today, Mark Christopher Lee. And we're going to be talking about his new documentary. It's relatively new, right, Mark? Yeah, it's been out uh, about a month. Yeah. And it's called The Paranormal UFO Connection. And of course, we're going to be diving deep into that. And also, um, we're going to be talking about Mark's very yeah. renowned um, music career okay. so mark let's <laughs> let's dive in because i did mm -hmm. watch um your documentary it was awesome <laughs> all right thank you that yeah. was brilliant <laughs> it really was i thoroughly enjoyed that so sure. before we get into the paranormal mm -hmm. stuff let's you know introduce yourself and let folks sure. know who you are talk about your music background mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. part of a very famous uh group called the jesus and mary chain correct i played with them briefly yeah yeah so let's yeah. talk about that. Sure. You can do an intro and mm. uh, just get folks acquainted with who you are and why, why, why we are here today. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll start with why we are here. Uh, basically, as a child growing up, uh, I was interested, I had a few experiences, but I'll probably talk about it later. Uh, but I was very much into a program on British TV called Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World, where he looked at uh, unexplained phenomena uh, like ghosts, UFOs, dowsing uh, uh reincarnation uh and you know investigated it with a serious scientific approach and it just opened my mind to there's more to life than just physical reality so i've always had that instilled in me and then you know i had my childhood i went to university i did a science degree uh which is quite a lot different from uh, a lot of paranormal uh ufo investigators so i'm, I'm kind of rooted in in science as well uh, so I had my science degree and then left university and then basically got into music. Uh, I was in a few bands and then I, I, like you said, I joined a band called Jesus, the Jesus of Mary Chain briefly as bass player. Uh, that was really, really good fun because they were quite famous. Uh, but it, it was quite funny because at the time I was kind of early 20s in party mode, wanted to have a few drinks and uh, they had already reached their peak and they were all teetotal and quite kind of clean living, a bit like I am now. But when I was uh, 20 odd, it was a bit kind of uh, anticlimactic to say the least. But then after that, that gave me the confidence uh, to form my own band, The Pocket Gods, uh, who have been going 26 years now. So uh, basically an indie band called The Pocket Gods. That's what I've been doing mostly uh, for the last 26 years and like you said we've uh, been campaigning for better royalties uh, for from the likes of Spotify uh, with the idea of doing a 30 second song simple fact is that Spotify pays out a royalty after 30 seconds and as it's so small why write longer songs uh, and this was an idea given to me by a, an American music professor called Mike Errico and uh, he, he just kind of did an article about the history of recorded music and why are artists still writing three minute pop songs because that was the length of seven inch vinyl in the today's media uh streaming media streaming world songs pay out after 30 seconds why aren't they uh just writing short songs so that's basically i took the ball by the horns did an album of 100 songs scaled it up did 300 did 500 and we did the mass massive thousand songs on one album all 30 seconds long and that uh, still holds the Guinness World Records for most tracks on an album. Uh, so that's the campaign is that's that's what I've done really. And then I got into making films because uh, I wanted to tell the story of the band. And like you said, you you've seen the documentary, and that's I didn't know how to make films. I didn't think I could do it, uh, but I did. I just went in there and thought I just want to tell a story, uh, and I'm quite creative. So I did that. Uh, so and that kind of I think well if I can you know make movies about music my my other passion probably my biggest passion is the unexplained is UFOs the paranormal spirituality consciousness all these weird things that I don't think you know there's enough enough decent movies made about them there's a lot out there uh, but I think I could bring something different because I do come from a a scientific background so i'm hoping people will take it more seriously because i do believe there is something weird about our existence that science can't quite computate i'm not saying it won't ever be able to uh, 
but it hasn't science can't provide all the answers and being a scientist I, I know that and I've spoken to many scientists who know that as well but a lot of them won't go public with it because you know it's it's uh, still a little bit woo woo so that's why I've ended up uh, making films uh, mostly about UFOs and that's why we're talking so thank you for having me on <laughs> oh, of course of course I I absolutely love what you did with the 30 second song thing I thought that was brilliant thank so you. how many um world records did you break wasn't it like eight or something well at one time yeah we've had about 11 it's quite a lot I've got wow. loads of it's great I've got loads of certificates <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> uh, so yeah it's, it is amazing and it's a, the, the amazing thing was I didn't do the uh the album to break a record I didn't know it had broken a record I got contacted by Guinness saying oh by the way you've broken the world record for most tracks on an album well mm -hmm. done uh, it was news to me but then once I'd broken it once and then some other band came along and did one extra song but it wasn't anything special it was just I don't know there's no purpose behind it but, okay I need to take that back because I'm trying to make a impact uh on you know how artists are treated so i wanted to keep it in the in the news really and it you know it's got it got me in billboard on cnn and news stations around the world talking about these issues i mean the issues are still there unfortunately spotify is making record profits but uh it's not being handed down to the uh, creators but that's probably the uh, subject yeah that's really. sad that's sad i i didn't know that after 30 seconds um like they'll pay for 30 seconds. So anything after that is like a bonus, mm. I guess. You can sure. do it that way, but yeah, it's I mean, it's it's my sense of justice or really. I don't think uh I think all creative people should be valued more, uh, what they bring to the world. Absolutely. Um, and unfortunately it's getting less and less valued. I mean, yeah. you must worry about AI and the music industry as well and everything I've, I've been reading, what's going on. I don't know. I mean, I, I have talked about this before and I've, I've actually used AI. I did an album. I did an album with my band and I did the same songs recorded with AI. I put it out there and let the fans decide which was better. Obviously, the band version was better <laughs> at the moment. <clears throat> I had more because AI is never, never going to be able to get true creative inspiration it's never going to get the blues be down one day get drunk write a song about losing his girlfriend right you know it's not going to have that life experience you know that's all true. the great arts have had and that, that's that's my issue i don't think will ever replace us that's my opinion well, that's good that's good to know so tell us about your connect connection to nub tv as well yeah, we do. Uh, as my uh, co-presenter, Guy Thompson, we do this. Uh, uh, it's like an MTV style show. It goes out on, on Tubi in America and Apple Apple TV. It's called Nub TV. And we mix uh, the paranormal, UFOs, conspiracies with music. Uh, it sounds mad, but somehow it works. Uh, we get a guest on each week. Uh, we've had the likes of Nick Pope, Yvette Fielding, uh, Arvi Loeb, various people. Um basically get them talking about, you know, what they're into, but also their musical tastes, their artistic uh, loves and likes. So just it's a little bit different. Uh, but, you know, it's a way of getting these subjects out there to a wider audience, um, which is why we're doing it, really. So what prompted you to create this particular documentary, um, The Paranormal and the UFO Connection? Like I know you said you've you've always had a lifelong interest in that, but what prompted your decision to and was it was it difficult to reach out to folks like Nick Pope and and get them to participate in this? Uh not really. I mean, Nick Pope, I have to say, was the first person I ever interviewed uh, about UFOs. I was working uh, as an editor at a New York magazine at the time, Dig This Real. So I was ed editor at large, so I could just basically reached out to whoever I wanted and I reached out to Nick Pope and he was quite famous at the time. He had a book about Rendlesham and, uh, and I didn't expect an answer, but he replied straight away saying, yeah, you know, so I've kept in touch with Nick over the years. So I've, always, I've had this network of people and, and doing the TV show as well that I, I built up some contacts and, and, you know, obviously if you've got a TV show on Sky and on TV, people take you a bit more seriously. So they're more willing to, you know, to do it. So I can say, well, I'm a filmmaker, but this is what I do as well. Uh, gives it more credibility. But the reason why I wanted to do this film in particular is that, you know, I'm passionate that 
there is something some uh, unexplained phenomena entity whatever you want to call it energy that interacts with us uh people at the moment a lot of them are seeing it as ufos uh but i passionately believe that it's not just a physical thing that uh i want to investigate whether these these craft this energy whatever you want to call it it's intel intelligence is it is it interdimensional is it coming from elsewhere uh is it from another plane of reality is it time travels you know and what are the connections between you know this and the and the paranormal and ghosts and things like that, that we see people see are they connected uh i'm sure this we're dealing with the same source uh energy mm -hmm. um, i've interviewed a lot of people over the years who go this way and i know some of my favorite authors like uh, john keel and jack valley they you know they proposed this idea of uh you know ultra terrestrials or you know so that that's what and i wanted to do a proper film about this and investigate it and see see where it got us to really yeah i just i recently had two interviews with a brilliant scientist uh you may or may not have heard of him. His name is Simeon Hain. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love Simeon, it. Yeah. It's yeah, such yeah. a joy speaking with him. Mm. And mm. we were just recently talking about that dimensional mm. connection between mm. cryptids and UFOs and ghosts. And, mm. and you know, we recently had a conversation about that. And it's, it's very mm. possible and likely. That's why I was so intrigued mm. when I saw your documentary, because it kind of pieces everything together in a very logical way and it makes folks question like is this a viable possibility the thing that sketches me out the most though is the government mm. and and i wanted to talk to you a little bit about that yeah. you mentioned um holland's elite right which oh, yeah. is yeah. Uh, part of right yeah. patterson's air force base in ohio yeah so let's just talk about them briefly there is supposed to be this secretive group with like within the military, the U.S. military, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they help cover up alien inductions and crashes and stuff. So let's let's talk about them and enlighten folks as to sure. who they are yeah, and the, what do you think the connection is? Sure. Well, the Collins elite, yeah, like you said, it was this secretive group within the U.S. military based at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and they were set up with the purpose of, you know, keeping it secret. But what, when they started investigating uh, these UFO crashes, they realized, well, realized there was more to it than just being physical craft physical bodies they actually believed that what we're dealing with was was, was demons basically uh and that we're dealing with some sort of demonic uh forces at work uh so i mean this is also explored in the film and there are still now elements in in the pentagon uh, and in the british mod I speak to Nick Pope about this, that, that I have this belief that what we are dealing with, and this is probably why it's kept secret, is it's demonic in origin uh, it's not, and should be left alone. Um, and I think that could be one of the reasons why we're not getting full disclosure, because the reality is the truth, okay, what's happening is far weirder than just uh, s some entity visiting us from another galaxy. I mean that 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 hypothesis always made no sense for me. If you look how big and vast the universe is, okay, there's billions of galaxies out there. Okay, so we've got life in one galaxy. How it makes no sense that you somehow found Earth, crashed, <laughs> you know, it's like finding a grain of sand on a on a massive beach. It's it's just illogical, really. So I think it's more likely that we are dealing with something interdimensional maybe angelic maybe demonic maybe these this good and evil uh at play here and i the collins elite were the first kind of organization to to catch on to this and think there is something dark behind it and i kind of get that just tied a little bit with the paranormal with uh, people who see you know shadow figures and things like that um so maybe we're dealing with the same same kind of entity so you think the grays are like demonic i mean we've heard so many stories about abductions and i mean where, how do you see that connection i don't i don't see the grays as demonic i see the grays as being clones as being ai uh that that is what i think and I, i'm not the only person to think that um 
but then again, that if the if the greys were clones, that kind of ties into a more extraterrestrial hypothesis that they are coming from another planet. Because why would they send life? Vast distances makes more sense to send AI. And that's what Professor Arvi Loeb from Harvard University has spoken to him about it. And he suggests that's that's more likely uh, is that AI would be involved as opposed to uh, flesh and blood uh, sentient creatures. And, you know, the greys, everyone, you know, is experienced encounters with them. Okay, they might be fearful, but it's quite kind of, there's not very much interaction. Uh, so that kind of gives me the, you know, the opinion that they are drones, clones, whatever you want to call them. And you think they're they're created by the U.S. military or some foreign country in on it? Like, what's your? Where do you think they? No, I don't. Originate? I don't think that. I don't think they're created by the U.S. government uh, or secret organizations. <clears throat> I think they control the truth, and maybe they have some of these entities, whatever you want to call them. But I, th I think we're dealing with either a long kind of lost race, well, not lost race, but this hidden, maybe was already here on Earth and has been living alongside us, uh, somehow masking its existence most of the time. That's a possibility. Uh, and, you know, or coming from another dimension, uh, it's it's interesting how the CERN Hadron Collider is about to find proof that there are other dimensions uh, out there. So is that a coincidence? Uh, maybe we're just going to the truth is being edged along. We're preparing us for the actual truth. It's going to be far weirder than just ET on a spaceship. That's why I think anyway. What's the connect connection between? That and like Project Bluebeam. I mean, because that's supposed to be like, um, yeah. Let Let's talk about that for a little bit. Sure. Yeah, Project Bluebeam is uh, dark psyops, I guess, mostly by the U.S. military mm -hmm. uh, secret groups, and it's basically it's using uh, holographic technology, Hollywood, sorry, holographic technology, Hollywood special effects, uh, and AI to to basically mislead people to either fake the second coming of Christ or to fake an alien invasion uh, with the purpose being to put the population into fear so they can be controlled. Mm -hmm. uh, for what purpose they want to be controlled is open to speculation. But, you know, Project Bluebeam does exist. It has been used. There was somewhere in Eastern Europe where they tested it out with holographs and, you know, it's very, very realistic. So it could fool people. And, you know, and we have to be open to the idea that maybe what some some of the things we do see in the sky, maybe it is, is all just from the US military, from this Project Bluebeam or something similar. There is some sort of holographic technology. It's possible. Um, yeah. I mean, it just is confusing to me because why would they do that and then come out with like an error report that yeah. basically mm. denies the existence of UAPs or sure, very confusing. yeah, it is confusing, yeah, but it just yeah, it it, it is confusing, and the especially the U.S. military has used these tactics to confuse people. Uh, because then they've used the, the UFO story uh, as disinformation. They've done that. And uh, there's loads of people have been involved in it. There was a famous author recently who, one of the guys that wrote the Bermuda Triangle book and the book on Roswell, wasn't Charles Bullitz, it was William Moore, I think his name was. Uh, and he was a big UFO writer. I mean, he came out a few years back saying, you know, actually I was, a, I was a, you know, employed by the CIA. Uh, so disinformation is, is a big tactic, always has been. Mm -hmm. So we've always got to be aware of that, uh, you know. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, the CIA has released documents regarding their their top secret projects, MK Ultra, and using uh, mind control, uh, using the power of the man, telekinesis, uh, remote viewing, which you probably oh, yeah. supposed to see with that. You know, all these things that CIA actually used and tested and they worked. Uh, and this, these documents are there now for people to look at. You know, the CIA proved that 
you know, someone in a room here could go, uh, their astral body could leave and they could see hundreds of miles away what was in that room. Uh, psychic spies. I mean, that that's that's real. I mean, this kind oh, of yeah. strange, range of things was based on a little bit. But they actually used it and maybe they still do use that. So there is something weird going on. Um, but I don't pretend to... Our own really government are. had a remote viewing program for decades, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It probably still does go on. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that, you know, whatever the we're doing, the Russians are doing and the Chinese are doing. So. Yeah. You know, it's because uh, I also I've spoken to uh, Uri Geller, uh, you know, the famous people seen sure. as a spoon. Under. But, you know, he's he he was tested by the CIA, uh, you know, when he was uh, part of Israeli Mossad. Uh, I mean, yeah, he was confirmed to have, have special uh, psychic powers and they, you know, they wanted him to use it for their nefarious purposes, which he didn't do. Uh, so who knows what what's going on that we don't know about so true what's concerning mm. is um the uprising in all of this satanic mm. uh, worship i guess you could call it especially in the music industry i'm sure you've been witness to uh, that yeah. um but then on the flip side of that we have a very um like an upsurging in folks awakening and having yeah. this dimensional consciousness shift mm. so do you think that that's just like the good versus evil like do you think that that's where the angelic part comes in yeah i mean it is quite uh old-fashioned to say this but what i've experienced in my life especially as a child is that there is good and there is evil and it's as simple as that uh i don't come from a particular i mean i was brought up a, a, you know a christian uh, but I don't just narrow myself in, into that, you know, I, I'm open-minded. But I can tell you with with certainty that what I experienced as a child, I, I experienced something angelic that happened to me. Which can we talk maybe... about that a little bit? Sure, yeah. It was when I was very young, uh, probably about five or six, and uh, it was, everything seemed to be okay in my world. It was, it was okay. And... Uh, I went to bed one evening and I was still awake uh, and I noticed this kind of blue, shining, glistening portal, like a spiral and bright light coming out. And then the woman's face appeared uh, and just told me everything was going to be all right. And it was just like my mind was just completely blown, but I felt safe. I felt like I felt connected to something bigger. Uh, and I didn't understand the message at the time. It was saying that uh, but it had a profound impact on me. And then the following days, my life was, was completely changed. I was, I, I was, I was abused uh, for years and years. And, and there were satanic elements to, to, to that abuse. And I, and I can't say too much because I, you know, I don't want to steer away from the topic of the show, but you know, there were satanic elements to the abuse and my parents and others involved were in the music industry. <laughs> uh I can't name names because I I tried to do that in my book once, but <laughs> it was, um, yeah, I didn't publish it, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, but I had that profound experience that came from somewhere. I, I At the time, I interpreted it as angelic. But after speaking to many people recently that have had <sighs> alien encounters, for want of a better word, they, there's, there's so much similarities between the two. I, I'm now kind of questioning you know, was it an alien UFO or whatever it was, it was good. So, and I think we're dealing with, yeah, we have a universe where there is, there is good and there is evil, there is dark, there is light. And I think it's simple as that mm -hmm. uh, when we get down to the nuts and bolts of it. And how old were you when you had this experience again? About five. Wow. That's really young to have such vivid recall. But then, yeah, absolutely. And it's always been with me and it's, it's yeah it's, it's it's part of me i guess so I mean, this, this being said to you that everything was going to be okay was that the overarching message or yeah 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 and at the time i was thinking well okay everything is okay but then it wasn't okay <laughs> in, in a big in a big way for, for a long time uh, so yeah 
and that was yeah basically people trying to claim my soul uh for want of a better word and it's only kind of it's only kind of recently that I stopped running away from it and uh masking what happened to me with alcohol things like that sure. uh just not facing it it's only in that I think it was about 2000 when I met my now wife and opened up and started talking about it that I kind of started to get over it, I guess. And move oh, yeah, that's and, where healing, you know, takes place. You know, I'm still still healing from it now. Uh, yeah. So, which I guess what, what pushes me to, to investigate and see if I can find out what this, <laughs> what this energy, what this source is. Yeah. Um, uh you know, I can't help but but see a certain connection to mm. this because um, I just think what they're doing seems very demonic. If you look at their, they have these like pre-shows and these celebrations and they're all so demonic in nature. Like, I don't know if you ever, you probably have watched them. Like they'll have like an Olympic type ceremony and all these people are dressed up in very nefarious outfits, very, you know, sure. Satan oriented. And it just, and then what you read, you know, you can't always believe, but it just seems mm. to make sense that they are doing something nefarious there with black holes or, and then I recently mm. heard that they, they're some, some person is admitting that they found some type of dark entity there in certain, I don't know. Did you hear anything about that? Like what's the connection? Well, with CERN? Yeah. I mean, it's, there's something weird going on and it's hard to know what the truth is. Like you said. Yeah. I mean, the kind of, uh, I think this year, there are some proper kind of scientists there doing good work, but I think whoever controls it has, has probably got a different agenda mm. and, you know, we can go down the conspiracy road, uh, but you know who, who's controlling them? Why? Uh, what are they bringing into this world? I mean, it, it is a worry, isn't it? If they're opening up portals into other dimensions with specific purpose of bringing in dark entities, why would they do that? I guess. Uh, but the reality is, there is, there is light, there is dark, there is good, there is evil. There's God, there's Satan, I guess. That's, you know, and it's, I guess it's who you choose. Are we coming to the time where we have to choose? It seems like that to me. We're going into I think that's an excellent question because I, I, yeah. I think it's been pretty apparent. But it just seems um, mm. like their ceremonies are not helping them. So, like, whatever. No, I, they're I, trying I, to... I, under, I understand. And there's certain elements that remind me of, you've heard of Bohemian, Bohemian Grove. Exactly. It's, yeah, there's certain elements that remind me of that, where all the top world's leaders and business people go, and it's all all this occult symbology and the owl and, and the, the sacrifice, things like that. Right, right. So, you know, and that was only found out because I think it was Alex Jones and someone else went in and took some, <laughs> uh, you know, recording of it. That's the only reason why we know about it now. So what, yeah, what yeah. don't we know about it, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> You know, it's funny. Simeon said that um, the UFO people don't want to get wrapped up with the paranormal people. They want to, like, keep things separate. They don't want to, like, see yeah. a connection. Yeah, I, I think we should. I think it, we, it's all part of the same, the same energy and we should be joining forces, so to speak. But, yeah, it's very much the UFO movement. It's very cliquey and everybody wants to, you know, five minutes of fame. You know, I'm generalizing a little bit. There are some, you know, decent people out there, but we should be reaching out to, like you say, the paranormal people, the people with open minds, the people that are worried about where the world is heading to in terms of people trying to control you and put you into fear. That's my biggest concern since since the pandemic, really, was like, why are they trying to create this, this fear? The fear is never good. You're not going to get anything good out of fear. You know, sure, but it's the best way to control folks. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. 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 And now there's more and more kind of controls becoming in in terms of, you know, they got the, the especially in China where you've got the uh the social pa passport system coming in where you 
you have to have credits to be able to leave the area and things like that. I, you know, that there's a, there is a nightmarish world that we could go down. I don't want to go there, so I'm trying not to focus on that. I'm trying to put my focus on healing the world, uniting the people. Uh, but it's everywhere you look is so part, you know, by part. It's all so, sorry, what's the word? Everyone's for or against. There's never any coming together, really. And you see that now in, in the States with the, you know, your upcoming election. You, you've oh. got the Democrats, you've got Biden, and you've got Trump. And it's like... Oh. I know, I know our RFK is trying his best, but uh, yeah. that's what we need. We need people who are going to kind of bring people together, not uh, against each other. Uh, but there we go. Yeah, it is a bipartisan universe, that's for sure. Mm. Uh, it, it's kind of upsetting to a lot of the UFO people that believe in UFOs, because mm. from what I hear that and, and believe, you want to believe that these entities, these extraterrestrials have good natures and that if they mm. visit us, it'll be a benevolent visit mm. Mm. for cancer and, you know, that they're mm. not going to come to us meaning any harm or, or and they, mm -hmm. you, you get my point. So mm. a lot of people, when you connect mm -hmm. the paranormal to that, it immediately becomes like this satanic, ghostly kind of thing. Yeah, that, that's where people are misinterpreting what, paranormal is really it's right. not all all like that you know uh people have you know positive i mean ghosts are pretty much an energy that's left behind or is not is in between worlds sometimes it can be dark sometimes it's just trapped and wants to go to the light so i don't think okay. it's always but people do obviously associate uh mainly down to the catholic church i think uh you know that these things are all evil but i think they're all evil i think there, there is evil there Absolutely. just like the aliens is, is evil and then it's, then it's good as well do you believe in things like the galactic federation you know you hear a lot of talk about that um that that there really is a federation of people from other galaxies and it's being hidden from us because if that's the case then that would make it really the only paranormal thing I would connect to that would be the dimensional aspect of it. That like there's these open portals or dimensions. Yeah. Where things are. Yeah. I, I, I don't know too much about the Galactic Federation. I, I, I need to investigate that more. Uh, seems unlikely to me. I think we're dealing with something that's not necessarily intergalactic, but is, is here. Uh, but you're right. If it is intergalactic, and paranormal side of things would fit in traveling here from other dimensions. Right. Uh, and that's something I talk, talk with Professor Ravi Loeb from Harvard about it. I mean, he, he thinks that's, that's a possi distinct possibility that, you know, aliens could be, you know, possibly jumping into the Hadron Collider. And, you know, we could be coming in that way. That's a possibility. So in your documentary, you, you use the connection of like spirituality and consciousness do you think that because humans are awakening to this, mm. that we're more aware of it, hence we're experiencing it more? Like, where do you yeah. see that connection? I do. Uh, and I think when when we're born and when we're young, we, we, we've all got it. And that's probably why I had my experience when I was young, because it hasn't been knocked out of me by society or whatever. So I think we've all born with it. Uh, but I think... There is a general awakening that people think there's more there's more there's more to this reality than what we've been told and what we're experiencing in the physical plane and you know we are limited our capacities of the brain we're using not very much of it and if we could raise our consciousness and use more of our brain uh, then the world would be a better place but also we'd be able to connect with people more using our minds and this is something i'm quite interested in i know simeon's talked about it a little bit as well uh, but I've also talked to, there's a Norwegian guy you need to speak to. Uh, he's done the history of the paranormal. It's called Terj Simerson. Uh, and he's investigated this lot. And he calls it the mental internet uh, that anyone can tap into just by elevating their consciousness through meditation, through prayer. Uh, and then we can use this mental internet. Uh, we can all do it. And, you know, I guess that's what the CIA were trying to tap into with their, mm. with their projects. But 
I, I think that there are those in the know, in the government or whatever, don't want people to access it. They don't want them to have this power. You know, it's a oh, I agree. I think I think that's why we have fluoride in our water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that's a big point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fluoride it calcifies our pineal gland, and yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I know that sounds like woo woo to a lot of people, but uh, yeah. I, I fully yeah. believe that. No, oh, no, I do too. Uh, luckily, we don't have a water if we don't have fluoride in. Uh, I'm, actually, my kids all drink. Uh, we have bottled water. It's not yeah. great for the environment because we've got bottles, but the, the quality of the water here is not not great. So they don't do uh, that in England. Put fluoride no, in them. No, oh, not not good. most most of the places I know in in the states. It's all. Oh, it's all. It is, yeah. And there's so many studies coming out showing how toxic it is for for children, especially. But they, but then you know, there's this whole big not to leave the topic but we're having so many toxic ingredients in our food too that europe doesn't i know i know i've, I've oh. heard you know Rob, robert kennedy's quite passionate about it uh there is a lot of toxins in the whole oh it's awful food system you can't shop problem. here without yeah. getting gmos and and oh, yeah. all sorts but, you of know it, but you you're in a you're stuck in a corporate structure aren't you where the agrochemical companies right. and the medical companies both benefiting so agrochemicals, they're using all their chemicals on the food. Uh, the medical establishment, they're using all their drugs to try and help people recover from all this crap. Right, right, right. So, you know, it's you're stuck in that nightmare scenario, really. So where is your finger on the pulse of of this topic that you made this documentary about when you... Because I'm yeah. surprised to hear Nick Pope kind of agreed with you and, and believed mm. the possibility... Like, what are you getting from the community? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think uh, they can't put the lid on it. Uh, those that know, it's it's come off. And the fact is, they're trying to shut down or discredit the disclosure movement, uh, especially in the States. They're trying to stop it from happening in, in the UK, uh, which is why I'm quite passionate about pushing these films out. Uh, but the truth is, the people in power know they can't keep hold of it the truth uh for much longer because people are experiencing things you know and the difference nowadays is everyone's got a phone you know it's, it sounds simple but people are recording stuff on their phone on the door oh, yeah. you know which we weren't able to do 20 30 years ago that's the difference and i don't think they're going to be able to just deny everything and that's my, my opinion and also you know, the people in power know this. I, I, I've just finished making this film, The King of UFOs. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, and it's about the British royal families and their uh, their interest and knowledge of UFOs and the, and the paranormal. Uh, and I've, I've uncovered a lot of stuff, uh, especially Prince Philip and the Queen. Uh, they were massively into crop circles and they would send Did their advisors yeah, they would send their advisors late at night down to Wiltshire to investigate what was happening. And even now, uh, uh, King Charles, he he's I have a, a crazy story in the film about him actually piloting uh, a UFO back in the 70s uh, in Canada. Wow. And uh, I've got a witness on the film talking about that. So I do believe that there's, this knowledge is can't be contained. It's seeping out. And uh, more and more people are getting more braver to 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 speak out. Obviously, oh, starting yeah. with oh, starting yeah. with your guys, Grash Favor, and what's his name? Or, yeah. You know. Well, they yeah. kind of flattened him real quick. Um, mm. David Grush, they they kind yeah, of yeah. squelched that whole testimony, yeah. which was pretty sad. And then, like I said before, you get things like the Arrow Report, which is so mm. disheartening. Uh -uh. Oh gosh, I mean, yeah, but it's. But like like Nick Pope says, it, it is a game. It's a game of chess. They're not just going to put it all out there straight away. I know, but it's almost like they came out and said, it's all swamp gas. Like, you know, you not everything is swamp yeah. gas. I, I mean, it's, it's also what you're dealing with, though. There's different factions in, 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 in the Pentagon, in the governments. Some want to push for more. Some want to say, just deny it all. Uh, especially the ones that believe it is demonic. They're just... Their motto is to leave it alone, basically. Uh, it's best left alone. 
What do you think we can do? I mean, if these things are demonic and there is this dimensional connection that's responsible mm -hmm. for cryptid viewings like Bigfoot and because there oh, is yeah. like Simeon was talking about yeah. the connection between crop circles and 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 mm -hmm. Bigfoot and that there's mm -hmm. definitely a connection. Mm -hmm. Um so you know we have all these theories and these conjectures about things, but mm -hmm. if if thing that's fine, I have no problem mm -hmm. you know with listening to any of that. The thing that concerns me is the word demonic and that Anything demonic, like you said before, I try to stay away from because I really believe that if you bite this stuff into your life, it, oh, it yeah. definitely has an impact on you. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. Like Ouija boards and seances yeah. and things of that nature. But what, what I'm what I'm trying to ask you is this. Mm. If these things are demonic in nature and there is this connection, what do we do to protect ourselves from it? Well, we can. We can. Yeah. I mean, we can we can connect with each other we can connect uh i really believe this through ce5 we can connect with the good out there on a, in a, other realms other planes other planets whatever you want to call it i mean i don't know if you heard of the ce5 close encounters of the fifth kind protocols i have yeah i mean let's I've, talk I've, about I've, that a little bit yeah i've actually used it myself because i came across it through uh dr greer who I'm not a massive fan of simply because he charges people to use his app. <laughs> and uh, I, I believe that, you know, if, if, if this thing exists, then it should be used for everyone's benefit. Not, we shouldn't be kind of, I know he's got to make a living, so have I. But uh, it seems like if this technology, this kind of mind thing is out there, then we should be sharing it. So basically what it says that through meditation, through getting together with like-minded people, uh, putting out good energy out there, focusing your mind on who you want to attract in, you, you can do that. And I, I've tried it. I've got a film out on Amazon Prime called UFO Encounters of the Fifth Kind. I'll send you the link. Yes, please do. Uh, yeah. And so we go through the process. Um, we get a group together at the back of my house. We film it. We had a really, really nice time. Didn't experience anything really until the end. We turned the cameras off. And then the cameraman saw something. Luckily, he got it back on in time. All right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got it at the end of the film. So it's definitely, I think there's something to it. And I've spoken to so many people that have, have, have tried it as well. I mean, it sounds a bit out there for me. I've got a science degree and I'm thinking, well, how can this work? Okay. How does my mind connect to the universe and to these other entities? How does it work? But I think there's, we have to realize the mystery, mystery of con consciousness, what it is. There is something unique to humans. What happens when we die? What happens to our soul, our consciousness? It doesn't just disappear. It's an energy of itself. You can't destroy energy. It goes somewhere. So there's always something, you know, mysterious about it. You know, there's so many people have had uh, near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences that can't be explained through conventional science. So there's definitely something there. And that's, that's the great mystery of life, that it's not just, you know, me and you sat on chairs. Right. There's something else oh no absolutely know. so so these meetings that you have because mm. i've seen video of folks that do that and they mm. you can see in the video these entities mm. in the sky mm. something mm. is is definitely is that what you're trying to achieve you want to yeah yeah on reaching out to the good uh because there is good in the universe as, as, as there is evil uh but i join forces with the good we can we can unite so you think there are good UAPs or UFOs, yeah, yeah. whatever? Yeah, yeah. However you want to describe them, using that term. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that sounds That's... like a fun, wonderful thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, but which is why I'm keen for people to to do it, really. But and then again, the part of me thinks, okay, so if it works for the good people that want to bring the light in, you know, what about if you get a load of devil worshippers that want to get together and right. <laughs> It's like, you know, a bit like you were saying at CERN or something. What happens if that happens? And possibility, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, uh, that's why I think it's really important to protect yourself and, and make sure that you do that before yeah, absolutely. working I mean, on no, this. I mean, it, it, I guess it depends how you're brought up. I mean, if I'm, which I have experienced kind of demonic attacks, I always make the sign of the cross. Yes. You know, um, you know call out Jesus to help me. And, and that's always worked for me. Uh, I'm sure there's you know, people of other faiths, maybe they be protected by their own faith in God's. Uh, but that's what's worked for me. Uh, and it works every time. So, 
do you call out to Jesus in the in the group as part of your ceremony? Is everybody okay? Don't, no, no. I mean, yeah. the, the ceremonies, they're not, they're not religious. Right. I'm just talking about my own. If I'm encountering something dark or evil, I will, just because of my own faith, I will call out. Do you uh, think we'll ever get an answer either from the government? Like, do, where do you see us heading? Because it's very disheartening like i said before that the government is is working so hard to to hide this from us do you think they'll ever be translucent enough or or honest enough to to admit to any of this instead of this you know back and forth it is it isn't kind of thing and it, it is it is difficult uh two things here one if we're dealing with the us everything They've compart compartmentalized everything. Uh, that's the trouble. And farmed it out into private sector. So it's immune from public information requests and things like that. So actually getting to the people that actually know the reality is the hard bit. But there are those that do. But I don't think they'll willingly release it, especially soon. I think what will happen will be a car crash event of some sort. There'll be some sort of... A <laughs> It's an event that they can't cover up, yeah. something new. Yeah, it could be. Um, do you ever watch Timothy Alberino? No, I don't, know. Definitely check into him. Okay. He wrote a book recently called Birthright, and I'm, I'm halfway through it. It's a brilliant okay. man. Okay. And he's got a huge YouTube channel, too, with okay, check lots it out. of awesome videos. Yeah. And okay. He talks a lot about this biblical connection between mm. UAPs and and oh yeah this is you know it's very yeah. biblical mm. in terms of how god created the heavens adam and eve and the whole thing i oh, mean yeah. it's not like a holy roller kind of thing it's a very scientific mm. way of of mm. looking at it and a very biblical connection mm. so mm. yeah i would i would recommend that you you i think you'd find his work amazing and very interesting thank you yeah i will do that sounds good so this movie, King of UFOs, is this out for release? Is it a documentary? No, it, it's, it's a documentary. It's not. It's just finished. It's not out for release yet. But going on from what you just said, I did make a film last year called God versus Aliens, uh, which is out in America. Uh, it's on Tubi, I think, on Apple TV, and that goes into the connection, the biblical connections to to UFOs, to angels, demons. Mm -hmm. And how, uh, you know, the biblical interpretation, they saw something in the sky, it was seen, deemed an angel, uh, whereas now right. it's deemed a UFO because of our technolo technological age. And, you know, what we've seen throughout history is, is, is evolved. You know, we had people who were seeing airships in the 1870s. Right. Uh, you know, and now we're seeing, you know, fabulous sci-fi kind of craft. So we could be dealing with the same thing that just appears as more, what is relevant culturally to us, I guess. Sure thing. That's what John John Keel kind of said that as well. Did you ever have any other encounters, either spiritual or aerial craft, since the age of five, or was that the only one that you experienced? That was the only one that was kind of possibly UFO, UAP related. Uh, I've had some weird experiences of uh, money appearing and reports coming out sky and things like that more paranormal i would guess but they never felt bad mm. always felt like there was there was a good energy there and i've had a lot of weird synchronicities uh because i think consciousness in your mind when you're connected you notice these weird synchronicities yes uh and it's important to notice them uh and you know i think we should all look out for them and once we see them there's more and more stuff that does connect thinking okay there's something weird going on you know glitches in the matrix maybe yeah oh goodness <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's your latest work then King. Mm. Mm. when is that going to be released yeah soon in the next couple of months uh so yeah it's just in the post-production stage at the moment but uh it, it's going to be uh gonna be, nick pope's in it as usual <laughs> again but uh, it's awesome got, yeah, yeah, it's uh, because he actually obviously worked for the uh, UK oh, government. Yeah. He was, uh, yeah, uh, and we got we got actual letters from the Queen and Prince Philip about UFOs. So it's quite quite interesting. Wow, I can't wait to see that. 
That's going to be great. <laughs> so what are you doing um, after the King of UFOs? Do you have anything else planned documentary wise or like, what are your yeah, plans? Yeah, I do. I do actually. Yeah. I'm doing a, uh, I don't know if you heard of a uh, UFO incident in the UK called Rendlesham. Sure. It's the Rendlesham, Rendlesham Forest incident. Uh, I was actually on an American Air Force base in the UK uh, so making a proper film about that, and I've got Colonel Charles Holt, who was the uh, base commander at the time, he's involved. And we're actually going to, in this film, we're going to actually do a massive Skywatch manifestation oh, wow. at Rendlesham, at Rendlesham uh, to see if we can bring uh, some energies there. Because I've got, I've actually got photographs and videos of things that people have manifested at Rendlesham uh so yeah, still like, active today the left there's still something there yeah yeah so i'm going to go there with a bigger but film but... the one that recorded the the yes yeah the, he was the one with yeah. the recorder correct was, yeah 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 so he's he's involved which is uh very exciting uh nick pope uh, <laughs> and uh yeah various other people that were involved and um, yeah we're going to go into rendlesham forest and prove but what, what we're going to do is prove that there is something there I'll get that on camera. Oh, that'll be Sorry. amazing. Because yeah. everybody makes a big deal out of Roswell, you know, and mm -hmm. Rendlesham's kind of like not really talked yeah. about as widely. And it's it's an amazing event that took place there. Yeah, you've got everything. You've got you've got a supposed alleged landing, you've got some telepathic oh. communication with binary code, you've got government disinformation and planting false memories. It's it's got everything really. But, uh, yeah. Didn't yeah. someone touch the craft and they, yeah. they got some kind of radiation sickness as well? Something they like did, that. Yeah, the, but I think both Jim Penniston and John Burroughs, they were right. the two that they both got medically retired from the army. I mean they, they had, to, had to be careful what they say because obviously they wanted their their army pension. But you know, Jim Penniston was the one that touched it and was alleged to have a da download in his brain, which he Years later, we wrote down as binary code. Uh, people have tried to decode what it says. There's some message in there somewhere. So, do you think there's a connection between uh, UAPs and crop circles, or do you think it's more of a energy, you know, like an energetic dimensional production? I think it, I, I think it's the same. It's the same uh, energy, a different manifestation. Because people have seen, actually seen, especially orbs. Uh, above crop circles just before they're formed. I think Simeon's actually seen. Oh yeah, he's seen this as well. Glasses on so there, is, there is some sort of energy uh, manifesting as orbs that is seen near crop circles, and then you know there is also a link between you know possible animal mutilations as well. We could be dealing with the same the same energy. Uh, so yeah, there is a connection. But some folks don't believe that these cattle or animal mutilations, because it's been other animals other than cattle as well, yeah, yeah. that there is a, you know, a UAP connection to them. They, they think it's more of like a demonic thing. Possibly. I mean, that? they're all, you know, well, they have all the blood taken out of them, don't they? I think, yeah, possibly. It's definitely something paranormal or something unexplained because... Yeah a lot of these cattle are found and there's no way to get to them and there's nothing seen or anything. So if something had just come down from the sky and did something. They're like dropped to different locations. And dropped, yeah, well. absolutely, yeah, yeah. And surgically like, removed hmm? of tongues and yeah, internal and organs. Precise, and precise cuts and things like that. That and, freaks me out the most because I couldn't but, imagine why any alien entity would want to do that when they have access to humans like if they're abducting humans why go after cattle and yeah but i guess maybe we're, we're being human centric here there are a lot of other you know creatures on the earth that maybe they want to interact with in some way who knows i need we don't know at the end of the day do we i don't pretend to know all the answers but i do think there is there is good there's bad there's there's evil there's light absolutely uh, and we should all come together and go to the light that's right <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's so what do you have planned musically in closing like because i'm intrigued by what you did with your life musically as well yeah i'm 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 hoping to get together with the band soon uh because my keyboard player hasn't noel hasn't been very well so we haven't been able oh. to perform 
hopefully it's getting better now uh so yeah we need to record more probably won't do 30 second songs though we did record the theme tune to king of ufos oh nice which is out now, I, I saw in the documentary you did make like three four minute songs as well yeah 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 together in a, an album yeah, we, did you yeah, we, yeah we've always done that i mean there's a lot of music out there. The band's called The Pocket Gods. We've, we've done about 77 albums now. Uh, oh. And there's, there's about 6,000 songs. There's quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, but we do a lot of songs about UFOs, crop circles, weird stuff. So. Awesome. Well, I'm going to be sure and put all the links for folks so they can. Thank you. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, Of that. course, yeah. And, of course, I'll share it on social media as well. Yeah. And I would love to get together with you when Kings of UFOs release. Yeah, yeah that'd be great, yeah. I and we to. can uh, talk about that next. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you a copy over when it's ready. That would be, that would be brilliant. Right, thank thanks, you Carol. so much. It was such a pleasure to speak yeah. with you. Thank you. And I'll be in touch again soon. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a blessed Bye. one. Bye. Bye. Bye.